there's going to be gaming gladiators as they're going to be facing off against the nemesis uh so this is going to be a really interesting match to see um we we just saw gaming gladiators face off against ixgt um brought that to a game three you know really close matches overall so now it's going to be a matter of if nemesis who just knocked out black End, are they going to be able to uh go ahead and face off against gaming gladiators um just to let you guys know this isn't the end if you happen to lose in the in the upper bracket they are still playing down in lowers um and then the winner of those losers finals will end up facing off against the loser of this match so definitely things to keep out for just because they're they're gone but not out um it is just going to be a lot of games that we are looking forward to here and so i hope that i'm not way behind on some news maybe that that perhaps just uh, what would be the word? Snuck by me? I don't know, but uh, we are seeing many different players right there that are subbing in today, possibly for Nemesis right down there. You're noticing that, of course, one of the MVPs oftentimes would be our trio, and so we're, we're clearly missing our greed in right here. And so there's a chance that I may be behind on some news, especially after I had this sickness and everything. I was kind of out of the game for a little while. But you guys, you're still seeing Rex right there playing its tanky character. Sometimes Rex would be playing the tree in the old days, you know, so Trevenant. Not even the old days, but somewhat recent old days, we could call it. But uh, yeah, this is going to be the ready go right here. Game and Gladiators on the purple, Nemesis on orange. Let's get it started. Yeah, another thing to mention here is uh, Azumarill. We, ha we have not seen an Azumarill in, in a long time. Uh, not yeah. really a popular pick just because huge power is really tough to use. But uh, I, I don't blame them. You know, if it's in the hands of Toon, yeah. uh, maybe they have something secret that, that they're trying out that they want to definitely play here. Um, but yeah, this is definitely an interesting play overall. And of course, I like our astute chat. Timebreaker Lucas was saying his OG subbing in. I thought they were an IX, and that was the last I had heard too. So OG was taken, you know, obviously playing as well for Nemesis. There were a few others. And so uh, you should also be looking at Trainer LGC, and I believe he's playing as the sword today. So we got Aegis Slash up in here. Um, Aegis Slash actually brought into a little bit more prevalence too. So that's been nice to see, I would say, just because Aegis Slash was really that like kind of off pick way before, uh, you know, the meta got shaken up somewhat recently here. But you're right, Kanashi. I mean, if you see Toon playing something, you pretty much don't question it. You know what I'm saying? Like like I call them the multi-tool Pokemon Unite. This guy can play anything. Yeah, and you, you got to figure out how much damage they're going to be trying to do. They are chasing the Azumarill right now. Sneaky Seal is going to actually go down this time. And now it looks like Nemesis are just kind of pushing forward, making sure that they don't have that level of, uh, of pressure to really play with here. You do see how low how low the azumarill is but yeah. you know in 1v1 altercations this might be the case but it looks like i spoke too soon uh they are gonna erase the easter bunny from the game um and continue on forward so right now zug just obviously making that positioning known and we're gonna say hey can we take off some of this uh, the wild farm that nemesis really wants right here so definitely gonna attempt it i think it got a little bit dicey right there so that'll be nice very nice hyperspace hole save right there and zug will just take the path rather than trying to teleport back on in and so here we see Sylveon trying to do the same and just come in with that hyper voice. Notice Toon wanting to punish, but uh, clearly not the long range character anymore that Toon usually you can see playing. Uh, the Magician will obviously bury him back up right here, but Utano doing work on the top. It looks like pretty good early game from Gaming Gladiator so far. Nemesis, at least with the old roster, but honestly, some of these subs in are very good players like OG was taken. I was just going to say Nemesis is definitely a team that can give them a run for their money for sure. Yeah, they, they know that they can do it. They can they can go for this damage, and uh, we'll see if that is the case. They happen to go ahead and break down that first one now. Uh, you do see Nemesis continuing on to push forward, trying to trying to make sure that Gaming Gladiators can't really get a foothold here as they are trying to get ready for this final bit. And now Toon dropping really low does get smushed there. Um, and now it's going to be a matter of if Gaming Gladiators have the resources to even fight. Uh, down here, are they going to start rotating people down using uh, using Indie Bear's hyperspace hole, or is there going to be something else that's going on? Right. Sometimes the play that you see right there is just people abandon that, you know, and they go for the Rotom. If it's like for sure out of there, you have to make that call. And a lot of the times the pro players can. So, you know, we, we definitely trust them to do so. Hyperspace Hole is there, but we're obviously going to see that Lutano will stick up top or actually I should say uh, Sneaky Seal, right? Still playing as that uh, turtle. So I need to keep my uh, get my words straight right here. But we do have that semi dreadnought fight. We could call it a semi skirmish here. And uh, Toon kind of backing off right now to try to help out the rest of the squad. And so Game and Gladiator 
Raiders just trying to find where can we get this positioning because to Nemesis's credit, they've been actually zoning them off pretty well from this. Now we see all hands on deck right here for that orange squad. So Nemesis will burst this down real quick. You see that timing, it was brilliant. So right side team, they will get it. Uh, wonderful job. And this is maybe a push that they needed because they need to put some points on the board here. Yeah, they are going to try to go ahead and dunk and see how much pressure they can apply. They are going to break with 20 over, so that is a good break for them. But now Gaming Gladiators has to figure out how are they going to be playing defense on the second goal. They aren't. They're just going to kind of let it go as you do see Nemesis starting to score into here. And applying that pressure, it's snowballing even more here. So now we'll see if the team decides to rotate out. They are going to take the teleport out. And now they're just going to leave the Lucario to be here all alone. OG was taken trying to get out of there and it looks like they might be able yeah. to do that well if you ever see like maybe a Lutano level uh, Lucario you know you're thinking like Fobs and from from Brazil but uh, also OG was taken pretty high up there you know when I think about my top maybe six seven Lut uh, Lucarios I was gonna call them Lutano sorry trying to get it uh, all in the brain organized here but yes Lutano up there Fobs and up there but definitely OG so you guys this is wonderful wonderful play that we're seeing and so, especially when you're at the mid game, we're almost to hit, about to hit that five minute mark and at 115 to 150 is pretty great. So now we'll see what happens with this Rotom. Yeah, it looks like that is gonna be the case. Both teams are gonna be scrapping here for that little Rotom dropping pretty low now. And it looks like Nemesis is gonna be able to clear that up, but are they gonna be able to capitalize off of it? It depends on how they are gonna be playing into this. OG was taken starting to dive into here trying to deal that damage onto Lutano and Zug but it looks like the rest of Gaming Gladiators is already up here to go ahead and burst on that Rotom it is going to go away so no real benefit coming out from that but uh, they are going to start rotating themselves up and around and maybe start getting ready for this next fight down here at the Dreadnought. That's pretty solid from Gaming Gladiators because sometimes when you're going up against a Rotom, that's the first one of the match. Uh, by the way, of course, this is where you're going to see those Unite moves fly. So obviously the ring's unbound to try to bring everybody in. But I was just going to say those Rotoms feel a little bit more beefy when it's that first one. So uh, again, good job clearing that out, Gaming Gladiators. But notice another good job is right here, down right, uh, right before that Dreadnought fight. You know, you take out some of these players. There's three out already for uh, Nemesis. So Gaming Gladiators is looking solid and poised to possibly take this. But we are going to see Lutano fall to that sword trainer lgc wonderful player but will not secure that dreadnought hit that final hit and so yes that's gonna go to gaming gladiators who only leads by two at this moment yeah, and they tried to push into that but nemesis is already back there go ahead and deal the damage but now you see up at top you do see the the little blissy that could can they get yep. that score through they do and that is gonna break it over by 39 and that is a lot for them um Gaming Gladiators just trying to apply even more pressure while they can, but now OG was taken slowly trying to chip away at a little bit of that for, uh, of that front goal. We'll see if they happen to get out of here too. But um, yeah, the next Rotom is going to be in 20 seconds, and we'll see if these teams are going to start prioritizing that, um, or if Gaming Gladiators has a plan to to go through with this. If there is a team with a plan, Gaming Gladiators usually is one, you know, it's it's very rare to see them kind of shuffling and trying to make up their minds on, uh, you know, on a whim. They usually have things under control, but hey, even when they don't, they play wonderfully. So Nemesis, I guess the onus is on you. Just a 30 right now would take this to a tie game. So as it stands, of course, you got to see no other scores on the board, though, for oh. that to maintain the case. Look at this. Very, very close. Definitely a well-timed magician right now because you're going to need that citrus, especially if you want to come in and interrupt for this row time right here, which they will try. So row time right now just brought down to almost 25. And notice that skirmish. Of course, the hyperspace hole will save some of these gaming gladiators. They're right back in it. So you refresh, come back on in. Trainer LGC going to poke and prod right here as that Aegis Slash. We're going to see, uh, of course, coming down to about half and uh then they have the hyperspace of their own as some egg bombs try to interrupt that Ooh. and this is getting a little bit deadly right now so gaming gladiators now kind of can, can shift the tides right there and pull a rotom for them instead so uh well played both teams but gaming gladiators gonna secure that one and uh, looking solid see and that was a huge secure for yeah. that rotom now that we're in final stretch rotom is an even bigger threat they are just gonna go ahead and let it go but it looks like the rest of Gaming Gladiators didn't decide to go ahead and trail that one. Um, they are just using it to apply a little bit of pressure. And now Nemesis has to find a way into the Zapdos pit. Unless you see top lane, Lutano just going in for that monster jam. Not going to be able to let them really get much going on for them. 
So now Gaming Gladiator is going to be able to pop their hoops unbound in order to bring them back down here for the fight. And now is it going to be for them to secure Zapdos or are they just going to play defense, kind of play with the Zapdos this time? We will see if that is the case. Deadly and sneaky and slippery of Lutano, and I love it. It was wonderful. That was the right choice, definitely, to secure some more of those points on the board because really now the onus is on Nemesis if it wasn't before. But ladies and gentlemen, this is where you're going to see that Slugfest. Zugra going to secure the KO pretty early on in that team fight, so this is going to position them really well. Again, if Gaming Gladiators was already positioned well, right, the Coup de Grasse is going to come in and secure that KO, though, but Blastoise is out of there. Notice now that some of the Gladiators are dropping. Let's get your predictions in. You know, who's going to win this in that Twitch chat right now because you're going to see Zugra fall as well so nemesis if they needed something it's this you got to bring down the gladiators fast though and that's not always easy kanashi when you got even two get gladiators right now it is still tough because not all of nemesis is there either so now they can start poking at that zap and see if we can make something happen in 30 seconds yeah this is going to be a really risky grab if they happen to get the zapdos you do see them still continuing to scrap here lutano going to be take down time missile they're looking at another one can they grab it they will so, Gaming Gladiators playing defense with Zapdos, probably going to just let it sit here and recover some HP now. It's all a matter of playing defense here. Can they do it? Eight seconds left. They are going to be able to break down the rest of it, and they are going to be able to secure that yep. down for themselves. Gaming Gladiators <laughs> going to force the GG and get their victory moving forward. It's a GG, forward. not just because they're gaming gladiators, but you're right, that is the good game, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll see that score breakdown, but clearly you know who won after that with a surrender on the board. And so, gaming gladiators played pretty solid today with a 322 victory, 162 for Nemesis. But yeah, this was a really good match overall. You, you did see a couple trades here and there um, in terms of the score, but you do see how much pressure uh, Game and Gladiators applied, especially with that Rotom being secured in that last final stretch. That amount of pressure, you either have to play the defense with it or you get punished for not doing so. And they let the Rotom march and Lutano said, you know what, let's take advantage of that. And uh, that's that's a wide open shot for me. Um, go straight in, get that quick dunk. Uh, Could have broke the, uh, it broke the goal. So just yeah. applying that pressure was just really good. Definitely right. So we can see these breakdowns right here. It's pretty indicative of who played what, right? You know, even in the numbers, but uh, Zug, kind of that damage dealing blissy as well. So not just taking the damage, but kind of doing good with that damage dealing and scoring. Get some of those KOs as well. So Zug, all around kind of a mini MVP, you could say in that case. Uh, it was wonderful to see. I know that some of our chats also talking about it. You know, Anime Lou was like Lutano sweeping uh, to get that score. Gotcha, or uh, Gotak Global. I'm so sorry, reading that name wrong. I uh, said, I love the way that Gaming Gladiators uh, team fight and they position. And that's really true. I mean, they are the masters of those team fights, but you're right. That positioning, especially at the Zapdos, that was sort of the marvel to see. And that's often a strategy they've employed. You know, they've done really well at spacing it out. All right, are they going to come from the bottom, the middle, uh, or the top? And uh, they manage really well. So kudos. Good job, Gaming Gladiators. I salute you. Yeah, it's just one of those things where when you do play that kind of game, uh, you, you end up winning those team fights quite well. And once again, you did mention how well Zagrug played. Uh, the one thing that, you know, a lot of players are not used to seeing, especially Blissey players, is Egg Bomb. Um, usually, yeah. you we used to only see Helping Hand. It used to be one of those, like, abilities where it gives you a speed boost, gives you attack boost. You might as well just push forward with it. Uh, it gives mm -hmm. you kind of a reason to initiate um, meanwhile, with Egg Bomb, it's more used to prevent players from being able to get within the hyperspace hole within that second that they need to be there. So that is the kind of game plan going forward with this Egg Bomb. It's not necessarily to like deal damage here and there. It's mainly to be used to displace and prevent certain players from either going back home with, with the Hoopa or to just like make sure that they are not in the position to go ahead and take these fights. We had a Trevenant hovered over just for like a mere second and then trainer LGC clearly gonna be going with that Aegis Slash still did a pretty good job with that. It's just, we've also seen trainer LGC before play a pretty mean Greninja. You have to consider all things, right? You know, uh, what kind of cop are we going with? And the answer against GG, I mean, it's pretty tough. Toon, don't scare me like that. Thought you were going to run a Crustle, man. But uh, no, most likely looking at the uh, hovering over the Cinderace. So, Kanashi, it's uh, maybe just speculation until that last second. Oh, Sneaky Seal, what you doing? 
Stop being sneaky. <laughs> He's gonna go ahead and end up yeah. picking up the Pikachu this time. So, uh, no defender, no no huge uh, no huge crowd the control bulk. ability coming out yeah. from them. So something to keep in mind. But it is gonna have a lot more damage. They are gonna probably play the Pikachu Blissey Hoopa down at the bottom of the lane and allow Toon to go through the jungle, do his typical run. Uh, but we will see how well that plays up into the Aegislash. Uh, Aegislash is one of those Pokemon has a lot of durability, but can also deal that damage, um, especially with that Unite move, Coup de Gras, it can be crazy. That's the ready go, ladies and gentlemen. Keep in mind that Nemesis is gonna be switching the sides here. So they are our purple squad with Game and Gladiators representing for our orange team. We're gonna be running our one, one, three for the most part, it looks like, and uh, Toon playing that Cinderace. We're going back to some of the old standbys. This is one of the things, if you would just uh, observe Game and Gladiators from the earliest of days, Toon playing quite the beastly Cinderace. So when I talk about Trainer LGC playing that Greninja, Toon can match you up with that Cinderace, man. So it's uh, we're gonna be looking for that slugfest to happen. So definitely keep your eyes on our central area players right now. Both of them solid. But in the meantime, of course, we got those smaller point values, that eight, that five, those are representative usually of this early game. So everything looking pretty standard so far, but you gotta keep your eyes on these teams. We, we, we saw kind of our preview of the first game. Hopefully, Nemesis can kind of pull something out here that makes this a lot closer, right? Cause that, I think the onus is still on them. Yeah, definitely has a lot of pressure moving forward onto them. Um, knowing that Gaming Gladiators is up a game at the moment. So Nemesis just trying to play it safe, trying to figure out if they can find a couple picks here and there. But now Toon kind of in danger, dropping pretty low. OG definitely taking a look at the rabbit. Can they get the KO? Uh, or if they just want to go ahead and take the bees, that might be their priority instead. And now they're looking at Lutano. Lutano is going to drop and the evolution is going to be there for Trainer LGC. So now a dual blade looking at Toon, going to be able Man. to get that KO as well. That maybe we'll back up not never mind um they are going to be able to go ahead and score there as well so applying a lot of pressure to top lane early uh really good play by nemesis that's why i try to keep our eyes on uh trainer lgc right there so definitely deadly but lutano says i want to answer that back we got to try to punish somehow right but getting in that five it's not measly or anything this is what you need to do right now pick up some of those points stack up those attack weights whatever you need to do and just grab points wherever you can in this early part of the match. We're gonna see the hyperspace for both teams, bring the hole back and then there they go. They're gonna TP back in. And uh, so right now, I think both teams are looking pretty solid. Of course, Nemesis in the lead, but when you're this early on, you don't wanna count that score to, to uh, what's the word? It's, it's not as much of a magnitude as it will be later on, right? So definitely um, solid gameplay here. It's looking pretty standard though for this early match. Now, Kanaji, what do you notice here? Because Zug, the giant, is going to be brought down, and that's going to be a big push for Nemesis right here. So this is where things start to change. Yeah, Nemesis wants to apply the pressure, might even want to break that front goal just to get that, uh, just to prevent the Citrus Berries from being spawned up there for the side of Gaming and Gladiators. But it looks like they are going to just apply a little bit of pressure, maybe back up a little bit. And now you see Trainer LGC trying to deal a little bit of damage as the bees are about to spawn and both teams are getting ready for that dreadnought got some words in the chat bring back tree yeah man i don't know what a trevenant would do in this mix up that would be quite the match right but uh everybody i think was pretty solid in their picks here right now for this it would be fun to see tree come and disrupt the game like reggie fees me but Nemesis, kind of early zoning a little bit, but Gaming Gladiators is gonna infiltrate right here. We are missing one player, of course, from Nemesis having all hands on deck. And so notice what's gonna happen. We're gonna see a drop from both teams, but Nemesis then quickly gonna be losing three members right there as that Dreadnought's at 50%. Notice though, <laughs> the push came in right at the last second, but Gaming Gladiators will still secure that despite that last second push. That looks like it might've gone for Nemesis, but no, GG's still gonna pick it up. Yeah, and they are still continuing the fight, trying to keep Sneaky Seal up against Trainer LGC, and Trainer LGC dropping dangerously low. But Tybusol trying to return the favor this time, knowing that Sneaky Seal is dropping really low. They do get the stun. There goes the Electro Ball right on top. Not going to have enough damage, and they are going to be able to get out. Gaming Gladiators is trying to recover some HP, but we will see if they end up rotating back up to uh, Rotom, or if they're just going to rotate a couple players up there. Might just get a little bit of damage going their way. But overall, a great fight from Nemesis applying that pressure, but Gaming Gladiator still got the objective at the end of the day. So uh, pretty even overall. 
I see you. Lot W94 was saying, hey, how about a Trevenant instead of Blissey? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I just don't know. We've been seeing a lot of Blissey these days, but we're going to see these bees right now. They were a contest a little bit, I would say, but uh, Nemesis having a little bit more of that positioning. Now, you're not seeing all hands on deck for the Rotom, though, so this could still be Lutano's. You just have to see, can he kind of pull off this last second pup? That's power up punch, of course. Maybe, you know, he keeps kind of trying to gear up for that, but you have to be careful with that last hit, right? Because clearly <laughs> a little bit easier said than done to try to last hit that but uh certainly will not get it so nemesis gonna go ahead and secure that rotom right here for the top path for uh this next objective yeah and they are gonna rotate a couple gaming gladiators up there just to make sure that it doesn't go ahead and uh score on their front goal and then allow them to dunk that 40 in that would be really huge so overall just playing it really safe gonna be able to burst down this uh this rotom real quick and just play the game as a as they see fit, Trainer LGC and OG was taken, trying to apply some pressure to Lutano, but Toon gonna be rotated up here with the hyperspace hole and followed by Sneaky Seal. Are they gonna be able to go ahead and apply pressure to this top goal, or are they gonna try to go ahead and play at bottom? You do see the hyperspace, or you see the hoops unbound, popped by both teams, trying to apply that pressure. The score coming out from the top lane, it is there, and the gaming gladiators having to take Dreadnought too, so that is a huge pickup for them. And now they're applying that pressure during this fight. A couple players going down and the gaming gladiators somehow get out of that fight unscathed. Not unscathed, but uh, without losing a single member of their team. Yeah. Uh, and just continue to apply this pressure to Nemesis. Definitely a few scratches, you're right, but definitely looking solid. I mean, if you're gaming gladiators, you're sitting pretty right now. You know, you're, you're pretty happy with that. Um, when we look at the level disparity too, definitely notice Toon, of course, ahead of the pack as it should stand, but Gaming Gladiators and now no Lutano, I should mention actually, that was very uh, quick change of mind. But notice we still have some level nines right here for Nemesis. And so ultimately when it comes down to that, the thing about Gaming Gladiators is we've all noted it too in our chat, astutely pointed out as well, how well that they team fight. And so if you're already going up with Gaming Gladiators, kind of having the level advantage for that, it's gonna be a lot better for them, so. This is looking uh, kind of deadly. I'd be sweating if I was Nemesis right now, especially after that first game. So, gonna actually bring down Toon, though. We're gonna bring down several of them. So, this is where the commentator's curse can come in because anything can happen, especially within five or 10 seconds in a Pokemon United match. Because notice what's going on on screen. Yeah, they are gonna go ahead and score and apply a little bit more pressure. Now they have their eyes set on that, uh, on the Rotom at top lane. Um, we'll see if they do decide to secure that down, and they do. So now Rotom slowly marching towards that second goal. Gaming Gladiators have to respond here. Um, that way they could go ahead and rotate and maybe even deal the damage that they need in order to continue to win this game. So um, they are going to be able to go ahead and burst that down. Now it's just a matter of positioning and getting ready for this final fight here. So we'll definitely look for that final stretch somewhat soon, but uh, obviously we can observe many things happening in between them, right? So clearly going to take out two right here from Nemesis. This is okay for them, but not the best because you would want to certainly have your licks in here for Dredna, but you are going to be back in time for that Zapdos fight. So it's not the last little, like it's not going to be the thing that ruins you. But again, certainly they would have liked that experience, right? Because well, we're seeing, of course, some more level 13s right now for Nemesis. It's still looking good for gaming gladiators, man. You don't want to give them any edge. And uh, so clearly we'll be looking at that zap in just about 15 seconds. Kanashi. Yeah, it's going to be really important to see how well these two teams are going to be playing for positioning. You have to consider that gaming gladiators also just picked up the Dreadnought, so they are going to have that little bit of shield to play with. They are sending Zugrug out as kind of a scout to go ahead and see where they're headed. They look like they are heading to top, and now it looks like the fight is about to begin. You do see the hyperspace hole coming out from the side of Nemesis, trying to bring the rest of the team in. The Bliss Assistants also coming in to try to keep them up. Hoops unbound, both popped at the same time, trying to bring in the rest of the team into this fight as the damage is going through. Nemesis continuing to be on the offensive this time, and now they are going to be able to pick off two, and now they have a three-on-two numbers advantage at the moment, but it's not going to be for long. Lutano going to be able to trade out at least one more trying to go back home with the hyperspace hole is it going to be able to do it and they are going to be able to get them out tune dropping dangerously low going to be able to trade one for one there but it might not be worth it we will see if nemesis wants to go ahead and take this they are starting it now gaming gladiators trying to figure out is there going to be a way in zugrug going to be able to drop the safeguard drops the egg the bliss assistance isn't going to be enough damage as nemesis is going to be able to secure this down and now are going to continue to dunk these goals in try to apply that pressure 
And so when we say this is anyone's game, we definitely mean it. Look at that turnaround right here. Wonderful job by Nemesis, of course. All the right plays where you need them. And it was not easy, of course. Gaming Gladiator is going to make that the uphill fight. But Toon, feeling a lot of the pain because when you bring down Toon, you brought down a huge damage dealer, especially from afar. So uh, when you got somebody like that poking and prodding at you, it's very nice to have the comfort of having Toon out of there. So Nemesis, you're looking pretty solid now with that 578 after a game where you were sweating probably up until that point so now it might just be the kind of that song and dance a lot of uh, you know we see some pings here on the mini map trying to say like hey they are here gaming gladiators may try something but wow that would be quite the quite the turn of events if they could do that in just about 15 seconds so i don't think that's possible ladies and gentlemen yeah they are trying to get trainer lgc down maybe just a little consolation prize can we do it no <laughs> it's not gonna happen trainer lgc is like no i'm a sword i'm gonna get this as much as i can get this shield up and yeah, they are going to definitely respond to Gaming Gladiators this game. Um, once again, it, it came down to literally that, that Zapdos fight. Uh, the way how Nemesis was able to find and isolate down the damage dealers from Gaming Gladiators, take them out early, and then say, we have enough space to go ahead and take this. It wasn't going to be on to Indy and Zugrug in order to deal the damage to go ahead and uh, steal the Zapdos from underneath. Uh, Nemesis's nose is there. <clears throat> You're right. You're going to be looking at that final score, 578 to 217 in Nemesis's favor. This is what they needed, you know? I think they played where they needed to play. Notice that there were no scores after this, so this is kind of an interesting thing to see, especially when Game and Gladiators is in the picture. If they don't score after that mid-game, sort of the later half, maybe, the latter half of the mid-game, I should say, and so notice though who's put the points on the board man i mean we got an mvp from trainer lgc which is definitely deserved but it's not for uh any other reasons like the rest of the team was definitely in there too you can see the 133 you can see the 100 that's og was taken rex tybisol also you know putting a lot of points on the board so this was definitely a well-rounded effort good job nemesis I, I gotta say, you know, I was feeling like, man, are we gonna see Game and Gladiators take that? It was really looking like it was going that direction. So we'd love to see it. We'd love to see them flip it around. Yeah, definitely wanted to see a good match go through. And this is just textbook example, you know, um, as we stated, you know, good early games uh, equal better games later down the line. Uh, Game and Gladiators gave us a great matchup against IXGT, and now they're giving us a great matchup against Nemesis. And both of these teams have challenged them before, so it's going to be really cool to see, um, you know, what adjustments they do decide to make. Are they going to go ahead and hop back to things that work for them? Um, and we'll see if that ends up being the case. I mean, uh, Seeky Seals decided to pick up the Pikachu this game. Uh, maybe they mm. might go back to that Blastoise. Maybe we'll see a tree. I don't know. I'm not them. Uh, it's definitely some things that we can see and hopefully we'll see uh, moving on, especially into this Game 3 match. Yeah, we see Gotak Global saying they were on the lower level side. Great aggressive play. GG definitely didn't expect it. It was There was a lot of interesting happenings there in that last final stretch. Um, Anime Lou was saying the Zap fight was insane. Nemesis strong. Telestria was like crazy skill. You know, they were strong, even though they didn't have a lead that whole game. Yeah, that's kind of what I was pointing at is it just really did look like we were going to be sending nemesis out of there with that one but uh wonderful job so again this is what we like to see and let's hope for more of that in game three because this is now the decider right whichever team wins this is going to advance on at least right here look good, a lot more solid so kanashi we'd love to see it arcway gaming you guys this is just pokemon unite blitz number two man we're still in the new days of this tourney and we're already i mean we saw amazing levels of play in the first tournament so to see this one going this way I'm, I'm i've got great uh what would be the word vibes let's say i've got great feelings about what's going to be happening with all the arcway gaming uh unite blitzes of the future yes and we are speaking of the future match this is going to be the next one in the books hopefully we will see winner of this moves on into the grand finals loser of this match goes down to losers finals and faces off against ixgt who have climbed their way to losers finals so this is definitely a game that has a lot on the line um you know you have to play a couple more matches in order to go ahead and get your way back up here so uh depends on if how hungry these guys are do they want to take a break is this going to be the play? We do see Sneaky Seal back on the blast, so he's something that is very comfortable for them. Now, what does Toon want to play? That is the question. Um, meanwhile, you know, Nemesis, very standard composition overall. Still running with Trainer LGC on that 
on the Aegis Slash. Man, he, he is giving, he's get, making me panic here. Okay, two yeah. is gonna go with the sword. Okay, so now that we have this matchup, it is gonna be really, really important to see where these Kanto starters are by the time that we get to, uh, by the time that we get to Dreadnought. Like, right. I feel like that is gonna be the timing and it depends on if the Aegis Slash, they are gonna put him in lane and if Blastoise is going to go down to bottom, or if they are going to go ahead and switch that up, allow Blastoise to go ahead and get those levels and then move forward. Sometimes you'll see this like in fighting games, like let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but like usually when a fighting game is brand new or people haven't been in it before and stuff and they play like a tournament for maybe a charity or like a guest tournament somewhere and you know, people aren't as familiar, you'll see actually they'll answer a character with another character. So they see, oh, this person's been winning a whole lot with that person, so I'm gonna go with it, you know. You would consider that if this was the case, but these are pros here that we're talking about. These are people that are seasoned players. So Game and Gladiators to answer that sword with another sword is definitely not that principle, you know? So I'm actually not even sure why I brought that up in that case, but it's just one of those like sort of parallels we can make, you know, sometimes to fighting games. But here in a MOBA, we're talking about different things. Of course, Pokemon, they like to call this a team battler. So if you want to use Pokemon speak, Please call it a team battler, okay? <laughs> but uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to be that minute down, 13 on the board. This is gonna be uh, pretty nice because we have our third game on our hands and you know this is gonna decide which team advances. Yeah, I, I totally understand how these two teams are going. Usually um, when you do see something that teams have been playing for the longest time, you try to go right. for a counter pick, something that, um, yeah. you know, yeah. something that disrupts the initial gameplay of that but uh, pokemon unites roster you know it's currently kind of small so we are still trying to figure out what we can run what is available um we have seen it in the past where you know meta picks get countered by like something that has never been seen in a long time um, sure but we will see if these two teams can actually match up with each other we do see you know the trade right there uh up at top they're going to be able to grab lutano real quick but now the dual blade uh, coming out from Toon, just rotating back up to top just to go ahead and play a little bit of defense for the team. So we will see if that is going to be the case moving forward. Hyperspace hole really handy there for Game and Gladiators, of course, because you can just kind of refresh right here on this bottom path. And especially before any sort of major wild Pokemon objectives would come in right there. So good timing on Indy's part and the rest of the Gladiators, of course, to follow. So Trainer LGC and uh, Toon. Both are resident swords today, playing those Age of Slashes. Uh, Age of Slash Eye? No, Age of, uh, yeah, I guess it would be just Age of Slashes, right? Um, but anyway, we're, yeah. we're seeing them kind of neck and neck right here. You know, you're seeing six and six. They're all sort of making the same moves too. It's like we're almost at a mirror matchup at that point. But right now when we see that 735 on the clock, we have 71 for Gaming Gladiators. Nemesis at that zero. Right now they're taking on the mini Dread. Take out that uh, um, Audino there at the top. We're going to see those bees spawning up right here pretty soon, and then that dread. Yeah, and we do see the way how these two teams are playing. They're up at top trying to get the bees to start, and then they'll probably rotate down with the Hoopa once they finally get that up and running too. Yeah. So we'll see if that is going to be the case, you know, 10 seconds before the spawn in, and that is exactly as stated on call. Uh, Gaming Gladiators is going to go ahead and bring the, bring the rest of the team here. But now you do see the way how um nemesis has to try to find their positioning here they're gonna break that front goal that is huge for gaming gladiators now nemesis if they wanted to rotate through it is gonna take them a little bit of time in order to do that yeah you see how quickly gaming gladiators also took advantage of that they just say hey let's take that dreadnought and uh, put them even more on the defensive so this is like you're looking really good as gaming gladiators right now if you want to secure that third game right you never say never in pokemon unite obviously things can flip at any time but Look at that. And we're now at 146 after that uh, big, I would say uh, it was a big motivating factor, right, for the Gladiators because they could break that bottom goal and get that dread so fast. And then look at this, a 30 banger right here on the top path. So going to break it as well. So that 30 and 9 right here. Uh, it's not looking great for Nemesis, but don't count them out, please. Yeah, exactly. Toon going to have to pop that. Looking at Rex, can they have to get this KO onto the Blissey? They do. They do scramble that egg and they are continuing on forward trying to go ahead and achieve the sword. They happen to do that as well. Continuing on forward, looking at OG was taken and Gaming Gladiators push into the second goal. If anything, this is giving them more space to go ahead and work on Rotom if that happens to be their game plan. But we will see if that is the case or if Nemesis does have an answer for this. 
possibly rotating back the rest of their team into this fight. Yeah, when you got Nemesis' back up against the T2 goals on both paths, it's just, again, that it, you sort of mentioned it too with the territory and everything, but, like, they're out of the healing there. It was just, it was a mess. And so they are actually going to secure Rotom at the last second, ladies and gentlemen. This is what they would have wanted. Then you're going to see that coup de grace right there. And uh, it's just an answer to everything that's been happening up until this point. This is what Nemesis needs. They want that push. You need something, right? So you're going to let Rotom touch down. This will make you charge that goal. Instantly score. You did have a 40 right here from OG. So you aren't really capitalizing on that full overcap, but at least it was just a difference of two points, at least in that case. Yeah, and now they're also applying pressure to bottom lane as well, saying, hey, you're, you have to deal with Rotom. We're, we're going to open. We're going to work on the lane that is currently open. But about five seconds left until the next uh, dread. Did I lose you, Kanashi? It was just mid-sentence. I'm not sure if he's there or if everybody else can hear him, and I can't somehow, but Kanashi, your audio may be off, so I may just wait for you to interrupt me. Otherwise, I'm going to have to be doing this with my sick voice solo, so you better come back in, man. But anyway, you're going to see the rings unbound pop right there and a KO streak of two right there and three for Hoopa. That's going to be Indie Bear for Gaming Gladiators right now, and that's going to leave them a, a big advantage to uh, hit this dread. It is going to actually regenerate because they had enough time to not uh, not be hitting it at that moment, so they will have to just kind of restart that. The good news was they sent a lot of Nemesis' players back, so, you know, they, the onus is kind of on Nemesis to try to bring this momentum back in, which is a taller order, right? Because Game & Gladiator, you can see them swarming this thing like hornets. Good news for Nemesis, though, it looks like they didn't swarm it fast enough, right? Because we're seeing now that they're making that break for it. And so Game & Gladiators, uh, they have a little bit more of a fight on their hands at this point, but have dropped two from Nemesis, now three from Nemesis. Look at this, there's going to be a lot of damage still dealt, so this is why they are the Gladiators, right? This is why that team's name really is like a title as well. So looking so solid right there, going to take that Dreadnought once again. And so I... There, okay, you're, you're in. I was like... You just got to interrupt me here. All right, I got you. And actually, I should say, it looks like our chat is actually not hearing any of us, and I just ran a test. So if our production can hear us, we should just let them know. We're going to keep on trying to commentate this, but, uh, you know, anybody in the chat or production can let us know if you, you think you got it sounded, you know, if, you, if the audio is there, basically, for us. So you guys can kind of dictate that. Otherwise, we're just going to keep going. Right, Kanashi? Final stretch. <laughs> So it looks like they were saying no audio from you, but uh, also no camera from me from our production. So if we come back and we still haven't figured that out, you know, we're going to have this for you guys. All right. We're going to try to figure it out. Um, so it does say, of course, that I'm on air right here, you know, uh, uh, from my end. So we're going to kind of be working on some of these production related notes, you guys. So please forgive us right there and uh, definitely let us know in the chat when you can hear Kanashi. We'd really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to ask them, you know, does this link work? Okay, here, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're sweating. 
So it looks like the production's got my video. I don't know if you guys are hearing Kanashi right now, but they're saying nope, so there's probably some, uh, it's funny to hear my reactions, I'm sure. I'm just going hee hee, ha ha, you know, <laughs> for all that. And so I may be on screen here solo for you guys, and I may also be in audio right now, because now I think Kanashi might be uh, just uh, the black screen, right? The, the, the nothing in there.